Aquaman is the story of Arthur, the son of the Queen of Atlantis and a surface dweller. Arthur is the one true king of Atlantis, but he doesn't want to be king. Orm hates the surface dwellers, and this puts him into conflict with Arthur, and they fight, and this movie sucks. Aquaman is the perfect example of political neutrality, a stance in popular films in which contemporary issues are mentioned, even briefly commented upon, but largely without any hard stance, radical commentary, or even conviction and sometimes even without intent. This is sometimes done to bolster a weak, flaccid plot, and sometimes simply as an unavoidable byproduct of a movie in which any systems of power and influence are depicted. Aquaman ever so briefly mentions environmental concerns, but only in passing and never with any conviction. Orm says he must save Atlantis from the surface world, and one of his reasons is that of ocean pollution. In the end, Aquaman saves the surface world from Orm, but leaves the status quo of corporations and politicians ruining the planet intact. All references to environmentalism vanish once Aquaman convinces Mera that surface world equals good because flowers, and the audience is not meant to question Aquaman leaving the oceans and surface world to be more slowly destroyed by said corporations and politicians. Environmentalism is not a great theme for the film because the film does not want you to think about environmentalism or even care about environmentalism. Aquaman traffics in suburban environmentalism, the kind of white liberal, maybe we should recycle mentality that does not directly address how climate change is the man-made result of corporate greed. If you blinked and missed this environmental message, you can be forgiven because it's so opaque that it may as well be a ghost. Orm is a nationalist, and as nationalism is often coupled with racism, he believes the surface dwellers must be eradicated to preserve the sanctity and purity of his own people. But the film never doubles down on this parallel. Orm's nationalism and racism is born out of a generic lust for power that can be seen in every boilerplate garden variety supervillain and Disney film antagonist. He's not a character with an agenda so much as a standard movie obstacle for our big lug who is too cool to have meaningful politics, ideology, or even ideas. Aquaman, the character, not the movie, is the I don't care about politics, planet fitness lunkhead to whom the audience is meant to sympathize because an activist character in a film with confused politics wouldn't fit. The reason that Aquaman's politics seem confused is because the creators involved in making the film didn't give two-thirds of a shit about a message and merely used some razor-thin politics as background noise for this jumbled mashup of shark monsters and fishmen. The reason that Aquaman's thin politics are barely noticeable is because the film spends so much time overloading the senses of the audience with a waking nightmare of uncanny, far too shiny special effects. And finally, the other reason nobody cares about what Aquaman has to say about our world is because the movie isn't very good, and critics are more likely to extrapolate meaning from significant works of art than from garbage. With respect to the few think piece writers about this topic, Aquaman feels less a film designed to comment on contemporary issues and more of a film that follows a pseudo-Shakespearean concept mixed with Arthurian myth and a bro action-adventure movie. Yeah, it's way more the bro thing than the Shakespeare and Arthurian things. Perhaps I'm giving it too much credit. Some movies are structured so well that you can find and assign other structures to it, whether those structures exist intentionally or not. John Wick has been described as modern mythology by some and as a condemnation of hierarchies, particularly capitalism, by others. The world building in the John Wick trilogy is enough that audiences and critics can assign meaning and see parallels to how our real world society works within the fictional secret society in the film series. The John Wick movies reveal the intricacies of the world mostly through visuals allowing the information to wash over the audience in a way that feels satisfying. Down to earth visuals too, not CG. Aquaman's mythology and world building spills out in intermittent bursts of exposition, introducing us to various kingdoms seemingly at random intervals, and providing us with visuals that do not reveal their world so much as reveal the CG budget. The camera is a dizzying, wide awake, bad drug trip. It spins during action sequences, signifying intensity, but also spins during sad moments, quiet moments, and loud moments, signifying nothing. The camera does not present the audience with information, it just tells the audience, watch me spin. There is no rhyme or reason to it. 
The nauseating zooming, upside down shots, and random slow motion within action sequences present no weight or impact to the action. The overabundance and overreliance on CG gives us a world that feels uncanny, never allowing the audience to be properly absorbed in the story or to feel grounded. The eye does not follow the action. The human eye sees some objects clearer than others depending on distance. This lines up neatly with how focus works in film. Some objects are in focus, some objects are out of focus, and sometimes the focus changes from one shot to another, and sometimes within the same shot, called focus pulling. I have, rightly, mocked the Granny's Peach Tea scene in Batman v Superman, but I recently rewatched it for comparison, and it employs standard but adequate changes in focus to emphasize the jar, emphasize the senator, to emphasize Superman watching with the people out of focus, etc. This is not groundbreaking, it's just time-tested, well-understood filmmaking. It's how movies and our eyes work. Shots that are all CG sometimes feel unpleasant to watch because everything feels unnaturally in focus. Aquaman even employs a floating CG effect as its camera to switch from one perspective to another instead of changing focus to show distance and emphasis. Visuals in Aquaman are bright enough to pop, but so flat that they can't. Aquaman is crowded with visual information, and none of it feels significant because the camera never gives anything emphasis or pins down a particular visual as shorthand for an emotion. Its wishy-washiness provides nothing tactile, and its distance provides no urgency. The images pulverize the film, the length makes the entire experience exhausting, and the gormless protagonist doesn't talk like an action star, but more like a tween who just learned the most impotent cuss words. It has mild charms, and deviates from some of the drudgery of earlier DC outings, both of which explain its mixed reviews rather than full-on dunking by critics, but it still falls short. Aquaman, the movie all on its own, divorced from its jumbled, mishandled themes, is still too weak to support said razor-thin themes and House of Cards' false grandiosity. In other words, it's not good enough to allow us to extrapolate any meaning from a meaningless film. Aquaman sucks, and now everyone can stop asking me why. I'm sure this will go over very well. My ability to talk with fish is of no help, Wonder Woman. Thanks, Powerpuff Girls. No problem. We're big fans of old school. <laughs> <Ow>! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.